I say good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J-Man, Manero J-Man Speaks. Welcome to A-Team Fridays. We're coming to you live and direct from our world headquarters here in Rochester, New York. We are continuing on, continuing, continuing on with Realtor Safety Week 4, baby. That's right. It's that important. It is Realtor Safety Month, but it should be Realtor Safety every day. And uh, we have a special guest with us, the safety lady. If you've never met her before. You've been hiding somewhere. Uh, but Tracy Hawkins, round of applause for you. Thanks for being here on the show. Uh, we tried to get you earlier in the month, but you were on the road. We actually have some viewers watching right now from Montana. They were sad that they missed you. They were on the on the you were on like the northwest part of Montana, I think, and then they were they're on the east side. Right. East side of Billings and, and, and that kind of area. So why don't you introduce yourself? Tell everybody who you are what you do we'll, we'll get right into it okay and yes i was in Kalis Kalispell. Kalispell. right right and then um we did it hybrid and then i did have someone from billing show up there uh it was great i am tracy hawkins i'm also known as tracy the safety lady um i'm formerly a real estate agent um, i have a twin sister she and i got our real estate licenses together i want to say about 35 36 years ago She's still an agent, and I decided that I needed to do something different. So I opened a safety store in a mall, did that for a few years, and I started speaking locally around Kansas City um, here. And then next thing I knew, I was doing it all over the country. And oh, so here I am today. And I think that's how, I don't remember when we originally met. It might have been Rapid or something like uh, that, right? We met in New Jersey. I saw you sitting at triple. the table in the break room during triple play. And I oh. thought, oh, look at that young fella. Look at him. I didn't, I didn't know you were a whole grown man. <laughs> that's where we met, in New Jersey. Okay, triple play. Uh, yeah. 2021 is coming back. That's good Good to hear. So you started back in 94. Four in the security industry, a, a, a store in the mall, which that in itself could be a challenge, just like real estate. Um, it was. We, we did a broadcast one time on retail apocalypse and how really in 10 years, 15 years from now, people aren't going to go to the mall anymore. You know, people don't now. <laughs> right. I mean, the whole <laughs> pandemic took care, took care of that. So let's, um, where, where do you want to begin as far as safety is concerned? There's, there's so many different things that we can cover. Um, right. you know, I think you have some great things as far as designation certifications, I don't know if, I designate, if I'm saying it correctly, the only ones that are available in the industry for safety. So why don't we, why don't we start there? Okay. As anyone involved in the safety world knows, safety is a hard sell. Um, and this is I, before I did real estate safety, I also was doing safety for just everyday people, um, American Airlines headquarters, Sprint headquarters, um, H&R Block headquarters. I was doing lunch and learn safety, you know, personal safety, um, safety on the road, safety at home, how to burglar proof your house. And I still do that now. Um, but I was just trying to find a way to make people listen to me. I want to talk about how to be proactive when it comes to safety. What happens is that people react to headlines. Here in Kansas City, a few years ago, we had the Waldo Rapist. So it was a guy who was um, targeting women in a certain part of town. I was all over the place. People wanted to hear from me. When he was caught, then it kind of leveled oh, out. Right. And that's the right. same thing in the industry. Whenever something happens, everyone's reactive and they need to do something. And then they kind of get complacent. My goal is to keep safety top of mind, like you said, not just one month, but year round. Although I will say that September is kind of like someone said, my Christmas. I've done over 20 programs this month and I still have more to go, but I'm not complaining. But what I'm saying is I want to be busy all the time. So what the, the whole thing started, um, I want to say about five or six years ago. I would, I'm a solopreneur, so I'm always calling, hey, I need to um, come speak to your agents, I need to come talk to you, and I had an education director say, Tracy, if you're not teaching real estate agents how to make more money, they're not coming to your training, they're not going to show up, so I had to put on my Ooh. thinking cap, it's like, yeah. how, but is that true, would you agree? Yeah, 100%. You know, even yeah. like what, when, when, what I talk about, you know, with social media, video, and technology, initially it was, they were just like... Oh, well, how does it make money? How do it, it, if not that, you know, it's not going to get approved by the commission, depending on where you are. And then number two, like the agents don't care. But I think exactly. that's definitely changed now. Exactly. And so, so I had the same thing. So I had to put on my thinking cap is like, how do I make safety profitable? 
and still be able to get approved. I've had my classes approved and I want to say I haven't counted maybe over 30 or so states. So I know the secret and people always say you can't get safety approved. You know, it has to have a consumer focus. So what I said is I'm going to teach real estate agents not only how to work safely, but how to protect the consumer. And so I'm going to use that as a way for them to build their business. I'm going to tell agents, here's how you can stand out from all of the other agents in your market. You're going to be the agent who not only makes it home safely every night, you're going to be the agent who's protecting the consumer. That's the buyer, that's the seller, even the FISBO. So I had to create marketing materials, tools, handouts for them. So I've done that. So whenever I talk to a, an education director now, I'm saying I'm going to teach your agents how to work safely and how to build their business with safety. So that has gotten me in the door. So basically using it as just another part of their unique value proposition, right? Here's the things that I do different as an agent. Here's the things that I'll do different in, in, in the transaction to keep you, your property, your belongings, everything in it safe. Right? Is that what I'm hearing? Perfect. You said it perfectly and that's what i do from the <laughs> from the seller security checklist walk in the door for a listening appointment you're not talking about cmas you're not talking about profits and marketing their property you're talking about here's how i'm going to keep you your family and your possessions safe while your house is on the market you know get rid of the pictures on the wall you know that show your family those have to be gone neutralize right. the house you're also talking about getting medicine out of medicine cabinets jewelry out of jewelry boxes those stacks of paper uh, paperwork and mail that may have financial information out of here so i'm telling real estate agents that's the conversation you're having with prospective sellers not money but you're talking about the very essence of what they're concerned about keeping their family safe so that's number one so they walk in with a whole different perspective and that helps them rise to the top. Um, and that checklist, again, I make it available as a PDF for agents to come in and start using it. Um, and then another thing that I do, and this is the one that really, really took off. I am a contributing writer with the National Association of Realtors, Realtor Magazine. And as a matter of fact, I had the most read article of the year back in 2017. That was about male agent safety. We can talk about that later. But one of my articles, I talked about FISBO safety. And I always ask during my training, how many of you all get excited when you see a FISBO sign go up? Do you, J-Man? Oh, I, 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 knew it. I made my bread in the first few years. FISBOs, I'd, I'd go pick up that sign and go knock on the door, literally. That was I'm not deal. surprised. I'm not <laughs> surprised. And I know another agent who's made their whole, okay, everybody's not J-Man. Everybody right. can't do it like you, and most people won't do it like you. So here's what I said. I created a FISBO safety checklist, and it had 13 safety. It has 13 safety tips on it. And then I want to say, based on my article, and since then, I have provided thousands upon thousands of copies of that FISBO safety checklist. What I'm telling agents to do is take that, put it in the doorknob or the door handle of a house, um, mail it to them, hand it to them if you see them outside. Do not talk about real estate sales. Don't tell them you have a buyer for them. Don't tell right. them that you can market their house and sell it. Just say here, I've been trained uh, by a safety expert. That would be me. I've been trained and I want to make sure that you have the same safety information that I have. And then by the time they get to the bottom, it has things on there like number one, don't let strangers in your house. That's the very first thing they're going to do when they put their house on the market. If someone knocks on the door and says, I want to see your house, you know they're opening the door. So I'm saying, don't do it. Here's what you do. Here's how to screen uh, prospective clients. And I send them, of course, to the lender. I talk about not showing the property alone. I tell them they have to have someone there with them. Or if they can't, they need to call someone and say, hey, I'm about to show the stranger my house. And then I tell them, um, put get valuables out of sight, like we talked about. And then by the time they get to number 13, they're going to be thinking, oh, my God. But this is dangerous. This is crazy. What was I thinking? An agent will have their business card attached to that FISBO safety tip sheet. That card rises to the top of the stack. And now the, the seller wants someone who's going to look out for them. So when they realize they're in over their heads, that business card is rising to the top. So they use that as part of their business development as well. Yeah. Lead with safety. So we, we just posted it in the comments. Um, I got on your, uh, the, the, the safety sheet itself. But it's it, it goes right in line with some of the things that it's one of the scripts that I use for converting for sale by owners. The first thing I say to them is, well, how long you've been letting strangers in your home? And they're like, well, what do you mean? Well, everybody that calls is a stranger. You don't even do anything else. Right? Well, no, I never thought about it like that. And then I guess the follow-up could now I didn't have the safety sheet before, but then be like, well, here, 
it, you could do it digitally, right? If you're not there on the at knocking on the door, hey, I have this great safety sheet, um, you know, 13 points that, that will help you stay safe when you're letting strangers into your home. Um, you know, if That's you need anything, point. just just give us a call. Or you have any additional questions? It goes right along. We always say people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. So it's the same thing. Like, oh, you know what? Yeah, you'll probably sell it yourself. Don't worry about it. Good so luck. One of those strangers will buy it. Yeah, one of those strangers <laughs> will buy it. Don't worry. I mean, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but but it's serving. And um, I created a theme song, "Lead with Safety," where I am telling agents every training, every opportunity, talk about safety. Um, I heard an NAR statistic that said after an agent sells or works with a client, 91% of the time, they don't follow back up that client again. I also heard a statistic is between what 14 to 18% of the time that a, a, a consumer, a seller or buyer will use that same agent again. It's not that they're bad, it's just that they're not top of mind. So what I've done as a content creator, you know I write, um, I also write for The Clothes, I've written an article for Risk Media, I'm interviewed, I'm the safety go-to person for Inman. So I'm a content creator, I have information out there. I'm saying use my content agents, use my content and then share that with the consumer. So if you hear a safety tip, then you know this is an excuse to pick up the phone, send an email out to your base and say, hey, I heard the safety tip here's a scam going around. Be careful. I'm just thinking about your safety. Leave it at that. Don't talk about selling anything, buying anything. I'm looking out for you. Here's some safety information. I say do that on a regular basis. That way you stay top of mind and you're not bugging them. You're not asking them for anything, but you're giving them information that can help them. And along those lines, another thing that I introduce, and I, I might talk more than you, J-Man, right? Yo, you're on a roll, girl. Just go. Just go with it. And one thing that I did is, um, it's like, what do I do with all of this content? Um, I've got these videos. I've got these articles. What do I do? So I started, and I'm in the process. I had to hire an assistant to help me. I'm starting a subscription service. So I am telling agents, hey, I've written the content. Let me share it with you. You can copy and paste this like on a regular basis, monthly to your base, your market base. It could be your sellers, buyers. Here's some safety information, articles, personal safety, auto safety, home security. Here is content that you can share with them on a regular basis. So everyone always complains about content. I know you help them with the video content. Also, brokers, managers, and owners. I created a certification workshop for them after an agent's family sued the real estate company after she was killed. They sued them for neglect and said, hey, if you had safety training, um, she wouldn't be dead now. So I put on my thinking cap and I said, okay, how can I help them? So I created a training, how to not get sued successfully. So I tell them how to set up a, a, a safety training and then I provide content along those same lines to them to distribute to their agents. Here's a safety tip of the month or here's a safety video of the month. So I'm saying, share the content, let me write it, let me provide it for you. Okay, take a breath. I know. I don't breathe between sentences. Let me stop. <laughs> I think I, I, I really feel don't. like you're from New York. I'm like, go ahead, girl, get it. But, People uh, tell me that all the time. Yeah. So a couple of things I want to mention because so great points. Number one, the safety designation so that there's a standard and protocol that you follow as an agent. But even more important, if you're a broker, a manager, uh, somebody who's watching this, you have all these agents that you're responsible for right? Vicarious liability, everything that they do say and, and everything you don't do to train them and supervise them uh, really can, can find you in deep, deep waters that you cannot swim right. out of. Uh, right. So, you know, having that standard in place so that every agent knows, okay, if somebody calls, our, our standard is that you have to come in and it goes in with a fair housing, um, you know, and, and all that as well. Our standard is this is what you do. You come into the office, you give ID, what, whatever it is, as long as everybody does it the same way with everybody. Right. Because it's not like it's board. not like you call me and I go, man, this Tracy, she seems a little shady. Uh, Tracy, <laughs> you, you got to come to the office. We're going to need your ID. And then the person who seemed really nice on the phone, they're the one that's going to murder me. You know, bingo. Jackpot, you hit the nail on the head. Consistency across the board. Woo! Woo! Get that air horn. Uh, so, because since we have some folks from, let me see, we got Tennessee watching, we got Montana, we got New Jersey. Um, and, it, you know, the, the gun laws are so different. I'm from New York. Uh, we're seeing a, a rise in crime in Rochester, New York, where I'm from. Uh, murders are at a record high, quite honestly, and carjackings and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, as agents, we're trying to get permits, but it, it might be nine to 12 months if 
if we even get approved for one. But I know, like, when I, <laughs> I've gone to Arkansas or Montana, like, everybody's packing heat. You know, Everybody. they're like, like, watch my purse. I'm like, why am I watching? I got a gun in there. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm responsible for it. So, like, exactly. what, what about the products? Because that, that's what I get all the time. Like, well, what should I do? What should I carry uh, in, in, in some kind of a, a scenario? And I, I think you have some solutions for that, too, right? Right. Um, when the National Association of Rural Tours publishes, and they just published a 2021 member safety report, I always look at it, of course, and they talk about weapons. So the number one weapon that real estate agents across the com country use is pepper spray, followed by firearms. So pepper spray is always at the top 18, 19 percent, and then firearms 14 percent. had an opportunity to interview the uh, general counsel for NAR and I asked, you know, what's the rule? Because everyone wants to ask me, can we carry guns? So NAR says that is for you to deal with your local association. So right. contact your local association. They, and they see didn't want an official to... statement as well, have it. They're like, yo, I'm not well, they, this. you know, the laws are different everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So they say go to your local association. So I advise agents to start there and then uh, check with the company that you work for. Make sure they actually allow you to carry weapons. Um, that, that's a good first step. So talking about pepper spray. It frightens me when I see what's out there. I see people buying stuff and then there were these um, self-defense key rings, these pom-pom balls and all of this stuff on it. It's like, stop, 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 stop. Let me go back to my home base, which is where I started selling products. I even went to the police academy's pepper spray class. I needed to know exactly what I was talking about. Did so the number one product... Well, I was supposed to get sprayed. I had contacts in. Uh, I, got, I, avoided. Oh, I never had to say that out loud. No, no, no. Yeah. We're not doing that. We're not doing okay. that. But All I right. saw everybody get sprayed and I've done more research. So what I say is people say mace, tear gas, pepper spray interchangeably. They're different. So you need to know that Mace is a brand name. It's actually a company name. They sell pepper spray. Okay. They sell alarms. And until recently, they even owned a chain of car washes. So Mace is a company. And then tear gas is what um, they used to use. It's an antiquated formula. If you have a spray, pull it out now. I'll wait. No, pull it out when you get a chance. And on the label, if it says CN or CS, that's tear gas. Get rid of it because it's a pain inducer. If you spray someone under the influence, it won't stop them. Um, as a matter of fact, it may escalate the attack, make them angrier. Hold on, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay. For those who might have not, might not miss, who might have missed that. So okay. if it's, what is it? Say this again a little slower. Uh, CN, uh oh, CN and CS or tear gas. That's what you don't want. Because it induces pain and really doesn't stop them. They could just get mad, er, and then keep on beating on you or whatever right it's a pain inducer if someone's high out of it um under the influence they're not going to stop and it, again it may, exactly it's going to escalate the attack make them angrier that's why police yeah, officers and even poster carriers use pepper spray nothing is 100 percent, but pepper spray at least physically gives you an opportunity to get out and if you've ever been sprayed by pepper spray and please say you haven't j man i have no comment Okay, I knew it. Okay, anyway, if, <laughs> if anyone has ever been sprayed by pepper spray, you know it makes your eyes burn and water involuntarily close. It swells the mucous membranes, so they're coughing, gasping for air. That lasts anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. That gives you time to get out of the situation. Um, pepper spray is a natural product. Same thing you have in your kitchen. And um, so that's why you can use it without hesitation, without worrying, what if I accidentally spray someone? The beauty of pepper spray is that if you accidentally spray someone, you can always apologize. If you accidentally spray yourself, splash your face with cold water and get some fresh air and just wait for the burning to stop. So pepper spray um, can also be fashionable. And I- Oh, let's see it. What you it, got? What you got, girl? Yeah, you would Show us. think it doesn't matter. I've been doing this forever. Look at my shiny, glittery pepper spray. Oh, Comes in goes, different colors. It goes with my outfit. That. I like it. Oh, now, I've got one for your outfit. You're a runner. So what yeah, runners- Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see this. I'm but gonna... what I know is you're not afraid of anybody. I saw your wife's story about you getting home in seven minutes flat. So I know you're not afraid of people but you might be afraid of dogs. So pepper spray for joggers. This one, look at that. It attaches uh -oh, to That's your exact, hand. I'm exactly looking for that. Oh my God. Well, you exactly I'm placing have an order. this one. Beep, 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 I, beep, beep, beep. I owe you. So you Wait, got I'm going to see you at the Rio conference. Huh? You're going to be at the Rio uh, conference? No, I'm not. I just joined, okay. but I'm not going to be at the conference. But I'll right, see you somewhere I, soon. All right. Give cool. me, no, I'm, I owe you one. Um, pepper spray also um, 
has a glass break. I like multifunctional products. This one's pepper spray on your key ring, but it oh, also has a little breaker. point on the bottom that'll break yeah. the glass if you're ever trapped in your car. For those who are not as fancy, you can get just a regular pepper spray. That, that must, oh, that, look how that must be green. Is it green? No, it's teal. Yellowish? How interesting. No, it's teal blue green. Look at oh, that. Cool. Wow, magical. Talk anyway, it about transparency colors. and safety. <laughs> Literally. And then there are alarms, sound alarms that make noise. They get attention. So there are all kinds of products out there. And But the difference is that I, I know what I'm talking about. I bet them. So I see people out there selling any old thing, and they don't explain to people how to test, how to use them. They don't talk about legalities. That's what I do. So that's why I want to be the resource for real estate agents. And I've had um, brokers buy some for all the agents in their office. Um, it's a necessary. You have to have something. So a hand, a firearm, pepper spray, uh, your your number one tool that you're already born with is your gut and your instinct. You After that, you don't really need anything else. Everything else is just on top of that. So I, I posted the, com the uh, link to it on your site under products so you guys can get that there. Uh, it'll be shipped anywhere in the continental U.S. or the world. My there world. are some limitations. So um, there are some places oh, that yes, either limit yes. the formula and things along that line. So, I, so that that's depends, another right? reason why I need to know exactly. So I need to check that out. And I have, um, am I able to post? I have my Shopify open to Shopify store. And I'm excited about that. I was trying to, to post that. You should see that. the comments. Um, if not, I you see the comments. In, yeah, you should be able to post in the comments. If not, and send it to me in the chat and I'll repost it. Okay. Oh, it's, is um, that you? There. Yeah, this Shopify store is where to go. There it is. You should have it. So okay. if you will post that so people can go right there and order. And I, I, I'm fully stocked. I got ready for safety month. Like I said, it's my Christmas. So I'm stocked. So what about traveling? You know, because I travel a lot, right? And it's so often... I'm a runner, like you said, and then this time of year, like I'm always running in the dark, always. I have a headlight, you know, I wear the headlight, and I, dogs are a real issue, but when I'm in an area that I don't know, all I do is I look on a Google map, and I go, okay, I'm going to run to this spot, and then I'm going to run back. So I never know neighborhoods, or I can see it change sometimes. Like when I was in New Orleans, I could, I mm -hmm. definitely saw the neighborhood go, whoosh, I was like, turn it around, run in the other direction. <laughs> exactly. But but you exactly. don't always, you don't always know that. So how, um, when traveling, what, are, again, that's probably not, can't carry it. What can you carry or what can you bring with you? It's Safety a federal back. crime to take pepper spray on board an airplane. Um, as that. you know, I just, I just got back from Montana. I had to fly. I took my pepper spray out of the case and I kept the case on the key ring. So that way people would see me and they would see that I had pepper spray. They didn't know it wasn't in there. So take it out, going in government buildings, saying, take the canister out. Um, one thing, one of my new favorite safety tools is something we all have. And you said that you look it up on Google Maps. Google Maps is ideal, especially when you're traveling. Um, it allows you to share your location with your contact list and they can see where you are in real time. So if you're going running, you know, share your contact list with your wife or whoever's on your list and they can look at their phone and see where you are in real time. And then you remember when Google had those cameras and they were taking pictures of our houses, they can click street, street view, see where you're located. So if you're in a hotel somewhere, they can see the outside of it. If you're in a house when showing properties, they can see the outside of it. If there are issues along the route, um, people can report them. Um, you've seen on your Google map where it will say traffic accident ahead or traffic yeah. jam ahead. Yeah, um, ways, that's because ways, people report same thing. It. Yeah, ways, right. same thing. Pe pe okay, exactly. So people report it. So if someone, and even active shootings, people report that on your Google map so you know which neighborhoods to avoid. Um, wildfire situations, um, you can report that on Google maps. Google maps is amazing and it's a safety tool we already have that we all need to be using anyway. Yeah, there, there's an app that I use called Glimpse. Uh, it comes standard with Android. You download it for iOS. But Glimpse, you can share your location real time for a certain amount of time. So if, if, if I am going running, um, like my mom, I'll tell you a story about my mom. She has Life 360 or something, and she tracks my, my brother travels from Pennsylvania back to Rochester to visit. And my she tracks my dad, my brother. And she's like, I'm like, mom, I, you're not getting me on that. She's like, I don't want to know where you are. I don't want to see where you're running early in the morning. I would I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. You know, so, you're nervous, right? Yeah, but it's 360 has those circles and everybody. You can see where everyone you is. But everybody. I'm she's you, like, she'd be like, where are you? Why are you in the woods? What are you doing? Exactly. So it's, um, 
but the the glimpse is a, is definitely a great app because you could do it for a certain amount of time. If you're gonna run for an hour, they can know exactly where you are. They can they can pin you, and then you could they can get right to your location if something did happen. Um, right. Or you could I've say I, I I want to go back to this location. If I don't get back to that location by this time, then kind of be worried and go looking for me. Right. Right. So, I mean, but I'm saying the tools are there and I teach real estate agents how to incorporate them. The ones who already have as well is right on your phone. So we talked about the, the, the designation for, for agents. What do they have to do? Mm -hmm. They just go right to the site here where it says programs. I think I posted that link already. Real estate safety right. programs. Right. Okay. Right. I, I um, typically associations and boards hire me to teach that um, some companies, all of a sudden companies are hiring for safety training. And I think that goes back to the liability issue. And I always say that if you are ever sued, if something happens to one of your agents and you're sitting in court and they say, what have you done to prevent this? The U.S. Department of Labor considers real estate sales and leasing a high risk hazardous occupation. We all know that. So the question is, if something happens to your agent. What have you done to prevent that? And if you say, um, we share tips. That's not good. If you say, I actually have a pr procedure in place, I have a handbook. I wrote a handbook for the room. So when they complete the certification, they get this practices and policies handbook. And it's like a guideline. They get agents to sign off. So there's no excuse. Every agent has an opportunity to get expert led training so they can sign off and say, I had the opportunity. That helps reduce the liability on the broker's end for the designation. And for the brokers, they have to complete my three hour CE class in order to earn that designation and to get that handbook. For the agents, I have two three hour CE classes. The first class is agent safe practices. We talk about everything from A to Z, how to screen, how to show everything you need to know to be an agent. And then the second class is the technology boot camp. I talk about cybersecurity. And by the way, October is National Cybersecurity Month. Uh, I talk about um, social media safety. We talk about technology. We talk about safety apps, all things tech, all things online, cyberspace, cyber safety, cybersecurity. So they complete those two classes a full day of Tracy, and then they earn the designation. That means they're in the loop. Every time I publish any more um, PDFs, any more handouts that they can use for okay. marketing, they get it. They get my articles, some of the articles they can share with the consumer. So they're in the loop and they're now the safety agent. And, are, you, um, um, are you offering that virtually anytime soon? The good Mostly virtually. That's what nice. I did um, in real life in Montana, but virtually this week in, at the Houston Association of Realtors, I ordered it virtually. Uh, uh, most of my work is virtual, J-Man, uh, okay. since last so, year. So um, if, somebody's watching, some if somebody's watching this now and they wanted to get that or take that and they need CE, uh, depending on the state that they're in, because sometimes look at guys, who cares about CE? You should just <laughs> take stuff because it's going to help you in your life, period. Right. Um, so if like if you were doing it in Texas and I'm not a Texas realtor, I don't care. I'm just going to take it. I want the information. I want the knowledge. It's something that somebody can never take from me and can possibly save my life. But you you did mention tech safety, which I, mm -hmm. nobody talks about. Rarely is that talked about. So I, I think that's a, a good spot to finish kind of here in our, our last 10 minutes or so mm -hmm. on um, tech safety, because agents are are very lacks when it comes to the safety and security of their computers, their devices, the information. So what, where do I begin if I'm an agent and I, I know how to turn on my computer? Let's be honest. Right. That's about it. <laughs> okay. Where do I begin? First, first and foremost, let's talk about the email. People love free emails. We all do. The Gmail, the Yahoo, the free emails. We love them. Criminals love them too because they're easier to hack. So if you have one of those accounts, you're you're vulnerable. Your real estate brokerage should actually be requiring you to use the domain, the company domain website email. So it should be agent, um, Susie agent at kellerwilliams.com or central21.com because those companies have IT protocols in place. So you should not be doing real estate business with your free email account. Um, scams, you need to recognize fake emails. Everyone knows who Barbara Corcoran is sharp real estate agent, right? She got scammed out of $380,000 because someone in her office didn't know to check the emails before responding to it. Um, but she was able to get it back because she knew the rules. And that's one thing I train agents that there are protocols in place with the FBI that if you get them in time, you could possibly get that money back. Um, you need to talk about some of the scams that are out there. We talk about Craigslist all the time. You can't necessarily stop it, but you can get out in front of it and serve your seller that way. 
if you set up what's called a Google alert, Google it, and then you have all of your properties uh, listed, all of the addresses listed in a Google alert. If anyone ever hijacks your listing, then they publish it, whether it's on um, Facebook, whether it's on Craigslist, you're going to get an email saying, hey, your alert has popped up and here's where it is. You get a link. You get to see exactly where it is. That way you serve your seller. You can get over, put a sign in the window. Do not wire money anywhere else. Um, we talked about some of the safety apps out there. I, right now, Google Maps is one of my favorite. Um, what else? What else? We talk about uh, making sure okay. that, that... Let me go back. Two things okay. that you mentioned that I, that, that I, I want to talk about a little bit slower. Um, okay. Okay. The, the first about the free email address. Like if you haven't, let me say this. If you have an AOL account, you need to <laughs> shut this live stream off right just now. Go. You need to walk out go. of the room. Okay. Just go leave. Get, just, <laughs> we can't be friends no more. But if, if, if you do, um, it real simple, like what, what Tracy said, if you upgrade, uh, they, it used to be called G Suite. Now it's called Google Workspace. If you, it's $12 a month. For $12 a month, you can have your own branded email address like mine is jman at jmanseminars.com that's my gmail it doesn't forward to my free gmail account okay um, but then also when you're looking at, at gmails or emails coming in like what tracy's talking about they're very very smart these guys are making money as hackers they're not dumb folks so that let's say if tracy hawkins it was tracy hawkins at safetylady.com they might go tracy hawkins one at safetylady.com and you looking quickly you're like oh it's tracy i trust her she's the safety lady and you send whatever information um the other one that we're seeing a lot of is when you this is why attorneys did they say don't send any wire transfers uh we won't send any instructions via email because they'll they'll spy spy where it is they spy on your computer they're reading all of your emails they're reading the interaction back and forth let's say tracy and i are in a transaction there's a lot of correspondence, right? Hey, Tracy, when's the final walkthrough? Duh, 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 duh. Oh, the, the, the closing is tomorrow at 3 p.m. Okay, great. Then th that morning, to the next morning, they'll send an email. Here are the wiring instructions for today's, and it'll be very similar to the email account. They'll even, they're so savvy that they'll talk in a way that's similar to how you would talk so that you're not even alarmed by anything. Exactly. Um, excellent, excellent points, j -Man. And one of the things you can do is if your email account's ever been hacked or you suspect how is someone knowing what's going on, if you go to your settings and you look at that POP forwarding information, look to see if there's another email address because that's how they're getting every email that you send is getting forwarded to them. So that's how they're able to keep up with all of your clients. They know when the closings are. So just check your email settings and make sure that there is no other address where emails are being forwarded to. Yeah, and what you said about Google Alerts, so smart. Um, what we've started doing, it's not just the property address. I would do the street name because now with the Craigslist scams, they'll say, check out this house on Anywhere Street rather than one, two, three Anywhere Street so that the, the alert won't come up. Uh, but then I, I also do my brokerage, my name, my you know, yeah. my, my broker, all of that stuff. And then you'll get one digest every day of all of the alerts that you might have. Uh, it's, exactly. it's, it's helped us more than once. You know, it, it's part of the code of ethics that you're going to make your best efforts to make sure all of the information you put online is accurate. And so that's part of it. You can't just say, I put my listing in and now on 10 different websites, it's all messed up and it's for rent on Craigslist. And, you know, we had, we had an incident where people were fist fighting in the front yard because they listen to this one. This is how good they got vacant property. They, they bumped the locks right to get in. They showed it one day only. They showed it one day only to a bunch of people. And here's the scam, guys. If it rents for 1500 bucks a month, they'll say it's for rent for 950 or something way below market. And, and they, they put a good story out there that says, oh, I'm mad at my agent. Don't call them. You know, we, we want to get this rented because they're not doing their job, et cetera, so on and so forth. So for this one, all these people rented the property. All these people got keys to the property. All these people gave a deposit. And so there was three people first of the month moving in with moving trucks in the front yard. Oh yeah. And they were gosh. like, this is my house. We rented this. So did we. So did we. Oh, yeah. Here's my lease. Oh, yeah. Here's my lease. Here's my lease. Here's my. And they ended up fighting. So. <sighs> Too much, too much. So, I mean, you're right. And I, I talk about all of those different scams and frauds. And with the um, pandemic, 
that came out of the woodwork. So there's so many that you don't even know about. That kind of information I tell agents to share with their consumers. You know, hey, I heard about this scam. Be careful. That's another one of those things just out of the blue or on a regular basis. You're sharing mm -hmm. safety information, not trying to sell anything. Um, I see that Jeffrey Scott, is, Scott Stanton is saying not in New York City, right? There are limitations in New York um, and other places where um, sometimes you have to buy pepper spray from a pharmacist, only a certain place. Some places you have to get a license. Some places you have to get only a certain percentage or a certain size. So there are rules and regulations, and I have to make sure before I ship out that any orders follow that rule. I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, so let me um, ask you this as far as the pepper spray because that came back up. A friend of mine um, who has all these clearances and stuff, he sent me, it's like a pepper gun, a pepper spray. Like it it has the mm -hmm. CO2 cartridge and then it has these pepper balls. And he's like, dude, this is great. You should get this. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't want to get it because it looks like a gun, number one, rather than like a spray. And I don't want, you know, I pull out pepper spray and then I get shot in the face or something. Um, it, it, is that better or worse than the spray? I'm fuzzy and I thought I was frozen. It's okay. Can you You're... see me? Okay. I'm fuzzy and frozen. Yeah. Okay. It's your Let's talk It'll about be that. Be fine. Yeah. Okay. And I'm plugged in. I've got my, um, anyway, so let's talk about that. I do not like pepper spray guns for the reason you just said, if someone thinks that you're pulling that gun out to shoot them and they have a real gun, guess right. what? You're yeah. getting shot. So for you, that reason, right. I do not like, that's why I don't even like tasers. That's, um, people exactly confuse stun thought, guns yeah. with tasers. Um, tasers are the deals that you shoot that have the 13 foot copper wire. Um, people talk about stun guns, which is the small cell phone size that has a little electricity. I don't like those either because you have to be close enough to touch someone for a stun gun to work. I like pepper spray. I like the pepper spray that I have here that goes up to 16 feet. People always yeah, say, well, get wasp distance. spray, it goes farther. Wasp spray is a no-go. People, it always comes up. People always want to carry wasp spray. And I say, no, 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 no. On the label, the very first thing that you see on a wasp spray label is that it is a federal crime to use this for anything other than its intended purpose. And then people are saying, well, if I'm in danger, I'm using anything. But the problem is we don't know what wasp spray does to people. We know what it does to wasp. We don't know what it does to people. And if it was so great, police officers would carry it. So wasp spray is a no-go. What about bear spray? Oh my God. I've never heard bear spray so much my entire life <laughs> is when in I was Montana? in Montana last oh, week. Bear I'm spray. Telling you, I knew that's you know, why I said everybody's it. talking about bear spray. It's like a fire exactly. um, extinguisher. Everybody it's so big. was talking about bear spray. Exactly. But here's the thing. You can get pepper spray in a large canister. The bigger the canister, the farther it will go. Um, bear spray is a giant can of pepper spray, pretty much. And okay. that's how you know that pepper spray is the, the proper formula. You don't hear about bear tear gas or anything. It's bear spray and it's pepper spray. Um, the bigger canisters, human uh, people can get big canisters of pepper spray. And again, these little deals go up to 16 feet. So you want to make sure you have a spray where you don't have to get too close to the maybe would be perpetrator. All right. Um, great stocking stuffers or gifts for clients, right? Coming up on like Thanksgiving, if you want to be like, yo, I care about you and your safety. I couldn't think of anything else to get you. Here's a, I know you're a runner. Like if somebody got me that immediately, I'd be like, you're my friend, you know, cause that, well, I feel exactly. that I'm tough, Looking out for you. right? I am a tough guy and, and I could handle myself, but I, I'm no match for a gun, a knife, right? If or a dog. Many oft, many times running early in the morning, you get these dogs that are supposed to be on leashes in the woods, and, the, and these owners are just letting them run wild. Oh, he doesn't bite. Uh, it's okay. I'm like, he doesn't freaking you... bite until he takes a bite out of my ass. Like, what are you talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But the thing with the pepper spray is that you can spray a dog, and they can't get mad because it's what postal carriers do. It'll burn a little bit, but it's a training tool. I'll bet the next time that dog sees you, they're going the other way. Right. And I, I might give the owner a, a little spray just for... <laughs> just, just for GP. <laughs> uh, what? Let's let's finish with like cybersecurity. Uh, like, pro, what do you recommend as far as like? Again, I know nothing about like tech. I just want to add a program to my computer to to help me. You know, from spyware and and all the rest of that. It, it, what do you recommend? What are the programs? First and foremost, um, paid versus update, cheap. Update, update, update. Um, whenever there is a security hatch. Um, some kind of hack in the news, you know, uh, like, for example, Apple recently had one. So what I say is on your phone, on your laptop, if it says time for an update, what do we do? 
Remind Ignore me later. It. Remind me later. I exactly. Time. Like I got time that, for that. I'm hopping on a Zoom right ex- now. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But that is that provider's way of saying, hey, we identified these breaches. We want to protect you. So you need to take the time to update your computer or, and your phone as well. If you are busy like I am and I, I'm guilty of a remind me later, set it to automatically update during the wee hours of the morning unless yeah. you're a night owl like night. me. Yeah. So you can set it to update automatically when you don't need it. Um, another thing you need to think about is cyber security insurance. Most people have no clue that such a thing exists. If your computer has ever had um, had or someone gets access to your client information and you get sued, if you cannot write a check to cover the loss, whether it's a wire loss or whatever they sue you for, you're out of business. But if you have a cyber insurance policy, first and foremost, a good agent will tell you how to prevent any hacks. They're going to talk to you about recognizing fraudulent emails, phishing emails, which now come in the form of text messages and even direct messages on Facebook. They're going to tell you how to prevent that. Um, But if for some reason someone accidentally wires money, they want to sue everyone and they sue you, you have a a cyber insurance policy that can cover it to keep you in business. So definitely think about that. Because E&O doesn't cover it. Well, when you're talking to your your agent Mm -hmm. and you're going over your E&O, they will talk to you about cyber insurance. It's a whole totally different deal. So whoever handles your policy, ask them about cyber insurance next time you talk to them. Um, it's a necessity, especially in this day and age with all the fraud going on. You need to make sure you're covered. And then um, finally, I'm speaking at the National Association of Realtors Conference in California this year. And I'm talking about lessons learned about crimes against agents. And J-Man, that's kind of my new my new program. And I've opened all my programs talking about the stories about the crimes against agents, because frankly, that's what gets agents' attentions. Right. They see that it's happening in the daytime. They see it's happening all over the country, big cities, small cities, and it's happening to men, it's happening to women. So I'm talking lessons learned. We don't blame the victim, but we talk about the crimes that have happened. We, we talk about it? my expert opinion, right? How to how to learn from it and how to avoid it. So that's my new thing. Lessons learned. I like that. Okay, so if you're not registered yet for the NAR annual conference, that's in sunny San Diego. It's 78 degrees and pleasant year-round. If you've never been, you need to go. Uh, so many great programs like Tracy and many of the other speakers that we work with and we ha- we've had on the show uh, will also be there. One last program. Give them like a – is it Norton's? Is it McAfee? Is it for, for the antivirus stuff? Um, Burton Kelso, who is also an instructor, he's here in Kansas City. He recommends AVAST, A B A S T. It's a free yeah. pro- right. It's a free program. Okay. I have it on my laptop. I have it on my phone. And he is the hands-on tech guy. He's the one going around fixing computers. So when he said AVAST, that's all I needed to hear. Yeah, and so it, it's, it's and it's a free one. Right. It's everybody's favorite price. Free ninety nine. Okay. Free ninety nine. <laughs> uh, Tracy, thanks for being on with us. Going to give you another round of applause. want to thank you and then we're going to come back over here and say uh good morning good morning good morning and thank you for spending some time with us everybody on 18 fridays ask the experts anything meaningful friday again tune in next friday where um our safety series will be over but i think we're going to be talking about multiple offers again but it's going to be representing sellers and representing buyers send us all your questions ahead of time because every state is so different uh we're here to help you this is jeremiah's j man speaks and make it a great day. Thanks so much for tuning in.